China has responded to Rishi Sunak's new nuclear-powered submarine deal with the US and Australia, accusing the partnership of going further down a dangerous road. Earlier, the Prime Minister had announced a major upgrade to the UK's fleet using cutting-edge technology to combat China's threat in the Pacific. And we're joined by Security Minister Tom Tugendhat. Uh, Mr Tugendhat, we'll come to China... Uh, in a moment. Just to start on defence spending, um, the Defence Secretary said that he was looking for an £11 billion upgrade in defence spending in the next two years. He said that was the cost of standing still. He said he needed to reverse the number of troops on the ground which were going down. It's not £11 billion, it's £5 billion. It's half what he said. So that means we're going backwards. And also, um, it's going to be spent on nuclear subs rather than more troops which can fight in a European theatre. This feels like the Defence Secretary has lost the argument. Uh, Ed, look, uh, the last time I was uh, really involved in defence budget negotiations was when uh, your man, Gordon Brown, was in charge. And I do remember that quite a lot of demands went in from Bob Ainsworth and before him from Jeff Hoon, uh, asking for different budget increases. And you're never going to hear me asking for a budget decrease in defence. I'm a former soldier. What do you expect? But the, uh, this government has done something that many others have not done, which is, is massively increased defence spending. We've got way beyond where we were under your time. We're aiming towards 2.5%, and it's a £5 billion increase. Now, you talk but about Mr. Tugendhat, the boats. Can I just interrupt boats, you there for a second? Because you know, because that isn't the last time you spoke about defence. You rather set a light the leadership election in the summer when you stood for the Conservative leadership. At the I wasn't time, you, it then. you tweeted at the time, the truth is we don't spend enough on the defence of our country. As PM, I would commit 3% of GDP to defence spending. In fact, you went further than that in an article in The Sun. You've just been defending 2.5%. You said then that um, last month the government promised to increase defending to 2.5% of GDP. This is not enough. And anyone who says otherwise is either naive or has been captured by Treasury orthodoxy. So if you're now defending 2.5%, are you naive? Have you been captured by Treasury orthodoxy? Or are you another politician who spoke out from the back benches and now you've got your feet behind the desk in the Foreign Office, you've forgotten what you used to stand for? OK, Ed, first of all, I'm not in the Foreign Office, I'm in the Home Office. Secondly, you can speak for yourself, but not for me. Third, if you read the articles, it actually talks about... Are you naive or have you been captured by Treasury Orthodoxy? If, if you let me explain, it talks about defence and intelligence in those articles. I was combining quite, well, I think, correct... Well, your first paragraph said defence spending to 2.5%, and you said that is not enough. Anyone who says otherwise is either naive Ed, or has Ed, been captured by Treasury orthodoxy. So are you naive or have you been captured by Treasury orthodoxy? Ed, I'm delighted for you to interview yourself, if you like, or you can listen to I'm my answers. I'm asking you the question. It's, you can it's, answer it's, it. it. It's up to you. Look, what we need to do is we need What's to have... Any, uh, do you mind if I answer or do yeah. you want to keep interviewing What's the yourself? Answer? What we need to do is we need to make sure that we have a defence and uh, uh, intelligence environment that addresses the needs that we face today. And the reality is that's not just about submarines, it's not just about tanks, it's not just about the helicopters that you promised we'd have in Afghanistan when your man was Prime Minister and when your man was Chancellor and we didn't have when I was on the ground there. It's about the capability to project force around the world that this deal, the AUKUS deal, actually delivers. It's about the intelligence capabilities that MI5, MI6, GCHQ are actually delivering. It's about the new National Protective Security uh, Authority. So do the, you still stand CPNI. by what you said in The Sun last July, when you said 3% is the minimum we need and anybody who defends 25 is naive Three. or has been captured by Treasury Orthodoxy? Do you, do, do you stand by what you said mm -hmm. or have you now resiled from that? It's an easy <laughs> question. Ed, I spoke about 3% being defence and intelligence. That's what I'm talking about. No, the first Three... paragraph said defence. <laughs> well, you should read the whole article, I've Ed, really. I've just, read out, I've just read it to you. <laughs> No, you haven't read the whole I'll article. I'll boost defence spending on day one. Ed, Ed, I know this is going to surprise you, but if you get beyond the first paragraph, you might find there's a bit more detail in there. Well, the it second paragraph said it's not enough two and a half. It does, it does actually talk about I'm, intelligence. I'm just asking you a question. 
Ed, it talks about intelligence as well. And the reason that matters is Don't because the reality is that the modern armed forces doesn't work uh, uh, as a solo operation. It works as a multiple and integrated operation, working in a thousand different ways with a thousand different partners. You know, the cooperation between our armed forces and our intelligence services, whether that's GCHQ and technical capabilities, or whether that's the Secret Intelligence Service or the Security Service in different ways of understanding how our enemy are challenging us. That is hugely important. And so that's why this isn't about just a number, a line item on an accounting sheet from your days in, in defence, but about the whole pattern of the way that the government responds. It's about making sure that our education and you know, our educational approach is about defending those citizens who have come here to study. It's about making sure that all those areas of our industrial life are protected. That's why the National Protective Security Authority Don't you think, Mr. Tugendhal, is so important. It's really important in politics that people are held to account for what they say. And you keep talking about what happened 15 years ago. Last July, you said 2.5% on defence spending in the sun is not enough, and anybody who defends it is and naive or captured by Treasury orthodoxy, and now you are defending 2.5%. Don't you either have to say you were wrong last July mm -hmm. or say that you've come into line with government policy on a position on defence spending which you went out of your way last summer to dismiss and say wasn't enough. I mean, just be honest with people. Ed, Ed, the challenge is, you see, if you don't read the whole article, it's very difficult for you to understand the argument. The whole article talks about 3% on defence and intelligence. That was the argument Your I was tweet, making. tweet, Mr Tugendhat, last July, on the 13th of July, says, the truth is we don't spend enough on the defence of our country. As PM, I would commit 3% of GDP to defence spending. A tweet, which, is that tweet still on your Twitter account? Is it still there? Oh, God knows. <laughs> you don't know? Well, I can tell you it's not there, but that's what you, you said. 3% of GDP to defence spending, which you have just now distanced yourself from, no, and said 2.5% is enough. No, I haven't. What I've said is 2.5% is the minimum that this government has committed. I've also said, I'm really sorry, but if you don't listen to the argument, it's really difficult to have this discussion. No, but, it, I, it but, but Mr Tiffany, with respect, um, I'm just listening to the tweet, and the tweet is very clear. But I'm also very interested to know whether you have deleted that tweet. Ed says you have. Did you delete that tweet? I, 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 I'm afraid I, I, I have no idea how the, how the, uh, the Twitter system works. I, I don't know whether it's there or not. So you, you aren't tweeting when those tweets go out? Uh, I tweet them out, but I, I've no idea what happens to them once they go out. Well, you are, they either stay up or you delete them. Did you delete that tweet? I, I didn't personally delete any tweets. And so unless why I make would a typo, have been, I don't so delete So why them. would that have been deleted? Was it because it was wrong? Or for some other reason? I'm afraid you'll, you'll, I have absolutely no idea. I don't delete those tweets. That's the really good... interesting because you're security minister, the Home Office. I'm just interested to know what, you know, social media is, is uh, a risky place, as we know. Someone's <laughs> deleted that tweet for a reason. Uh, well, I'm, look, I'm very lucky to have uh, many people who support my, uh, you know, who, who help work in, in, in the office, and I'll, and I'll ask, because there are various different programmes I know that uh, allow you to clean up these things on different, on different timescales, and maybe there's, there's a setting on that. I don't know. I'll have to check. Do you think they cleaned it up because you no longer believe it? I've just explained to you that I do. I've literally just explained to you okay. that actually I believe that we need to be heading towards 3% for defence and intelligence. I've literally but just Mr. explained Tugendhal, to you that these things Mr. matter. I'm really sorry. That is not what the tweet said. That is not what the Sun article said. It said 3% of GDP for defence spending. That's what you yeah. said in both the tweet and in the article. You're now resiling from that, understandably, because that is not what Rishi Sunak has done. And, he's someone, has de and someone has deleted yeah, that thought from your social media. What yeah. Well, you just what the defence secretary it. said. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to have an argument when you won't listen to what I tell you. We listen, uh, look, I mean, I, I think you're fine when people look at the transcript of this. We listen to you all too carefully. <laughs> we took seriously what you wrote in the Sun, what you tweeted. You brought alive the leadership election last <laughs> July, and unfortunately. You've now resolved from it. You've got no, your feet I, behind Ed, the desk in the office and you're no longer standing up for what you used to believe in. Ed, Ed, first of all, that's simply not true. I keep saying to you, you'll never find me arguing against uh, defence spending. I've argued in favour of it for many years. The second thing I've always argued is that we need to treat defence spending as what it should be, which is an integrated package. And the third thing I keep saying is that looking at 3% is absolutely the right thing to do and that's exactly what this government is doing. Okay. So I think the combination of the three is actually pretty consistent. I'm sorry you don't see it. I really do, uh, you know, I, w I wish you would, but, okay. but I can't force it on you. I hesitate to give people advice on Twitter.
But if I were you, I'd go and check your tweets. <laughs> well, <laughs> Unless they've been deleted by some... And, and I'll look at how the settings work. Um, thank you Tom very much. Tugendhat, yes, thanks very much indeed.